and our first video about the Sony Venice, I gave you an overview of its major features. Let's go a little bit deeper into some of those. The camera has a full frame sensor. It's actually 36 millimeter. And what this allows you to do is to get about one or two stops equivalent of a shallower depth of field than you would get on a typical Super 35 lens. So that's, that's a pretty handy feature if you want to get very, very shallow depth of field. That 6K sensor, by the way, it's interchangeable. You can take four screws out, take that out, and in the future, when some newer, cooler, fancier sensor comes along, you can mount that in here without having to buy a whole new camera. Aside from the ND filter wheels, when you're shooting, the only moving part on the entire camera is the internal fan, which keeps it cool. And the whole ventilation system here is designed to isolate all the electronics from that, so it's impervious to sand and dust and moisture. The camera buttons are well laid out and they have enough of them so that you don't have to go deep into menus to try to find things. And they're even illuminated at night when you're working in a dark place or on a dark part of the set. The menus are the most intuitive and the most simple and fast and easy to use of anything that Sony has ever made before. It's very, very easy to go in and change things like your color temperature, your shutter angle, the internal NDs, and then if you want to go in deeper to make other deeper project settings or whatever it may be, that's real easy to do. And it's all done on this outside part of the menu that you don't have to deal with as a user. Like, all I wanted to do was change the shutter angle and I have to go through 10 menus. Not anymore. And on the user side, this is the menu that the DP, or the operator, is going to use to change the basic things that you most often need to get to. It's very, very easy and fast. The viewfinder for the Venice has also been designed from the ground up. It's 1920 by 1080 OLED, so it's very high resolution. It's got really good contrast as well, so it makes that critical focusing that you need in 4K very, very easy to get. The Venice has eight stops of internal NDs, which are servo controlled, and they're very, very easy to switch and change as you need. One of the really important things about this is that you don't have a need for a matte box and external filters. So if you're working on a drone or an underwater housing or in a helicopter or on a gimbal or whatever, you don't have to have this big thing hanging off the front. And it's very easy, very, very fast to change them. And with those eight stops of ND, which start at clear and go to one and then all the way up to eight stops, you have a lot of control over your depth of field and your exposure, regardless of what ISO you're working at. The frame rates are all the ones you would expect from 2398, 24, 25, uh, 2997, 50, 5994, you name it. And there's also talk of high frame rates on the way. The ISOs in the Venice range from 125 up to 10,000. So it gives you a lot of room to work with there. But Sony has designed this sensor so that it can be optimized to be native 500 or native 2500. So if you're working in very dark scenes, such as these nighttime scenes that were shot over LA at 2500 ISO, or whether you're working in bright daylight out in the desert, as is shown here in this film that Claudio Miranda shot, you've got a lot of room to work with. And that 500 and 2500 ISO, those kind of cross over when you're adjusting your neutral density filters. So it's not like you have two separate cameras with two separate looks. The images from 500 ISO and 2500 ISO, those are gonna look like they were shot with the same camera. With the optional R7 RAW recorder, which by the way, bolts on with just four bolts, it records the XOCN and RAW formats on these solid state cards. This happens to be a one terabyte one. So with that, you can record 16-bit linear RAW. And an XOCN, which we'll talk about more in the workflow video, it's the same thing, it's just compressed, so your file sizes are much, much smaller. The camera also records on SBIS cards internally, which have been around for quite a long time. We'll talk more about those formats in the next video on workflow. Lens-wise, the Venice comes with a lever lock E-mount with a PL mount mounted on top of that. So if you're in a, let's say an underwater housing, you're in a confined space on a gimbal or whatever, and you wanna use a smaller E-mount lens, you just take that PL mount off of there and you're good to go. And then when you wanna go with your PL lenses again, whether it's anamorphic or super 35, spherical, whatever you can think of, put that PL mount on there and you're good to go. So as you can see, the Venice has quite a lot of important features and I can't hit on every single one of them. But let's talk about workflow. That'll be our next video.